This stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy and other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. Today, we are going to find out. Hello, everyone, and welcome to day eight of Malta's Madrid. We're coming to you live from the Madrid Arena for our best of five lower bracket final between Sentinels and Paper Rex. I'm your host, Ying Su, and I'm here on the desk today with Saisho, Kakuka, and Tom. We're in kind of like a bold sandwich. I love it. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty good. I mean, I love the intro. How do, how do you make your sandwich? Do you put, I'm, I'm at the top or the bottom, and do you put an egg on the top or the bottom? So That's why I'm very bottom. confused. <laughs> I think that's up to you guys. <laughs> that's up to you guys. I, don't, I don't like the energy that we brought out to begin the day today. <laughs> I I'm love stuck. the energy I that we it. brought out. I love it. Uh, because if we take a look at our current bracket, it's exciting times if you're a fan of the Pacific region because Kakuka, for the first time ever, we have two Pacific teams in the top three. Yeah, exactly. And what a way for Genji to make it, right? Defeating, defying all expectations, making it this far and having Paper Rex at another chance to go into another final. It all gets us like today. Yeah. It's got to feel gutting being DRX at home and realizing yeah. that after trying so many times to get to that point, it's Gen G that's overtaking you and just Munchkin exploding to the top level immediately. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit more because Tom, like uh, Saito just said, no DRX, but Gen G in a grand final, first Korean team. Again, mm. exciting stuff. Yeah, maybe one or two players that have sort of made that comeback and talking about the likes of Lackia and obviously their coach and solo has had to sort of sit in the back lines a little bit, but it was a real redemption arc yesterday. The fact that those players got knocked to the lower bracket and now they got to do the same to Sentinels. They look so good. I mean, yeah. these Gen G players look absolutely on fire. On an individual level, I'm not sure there's a tw another team in the tournament with as many players at that kind of caliber, which is bonkers. I mean, everybody was expecting that from probably more like the America's teams or the EMEA teams. Yeah, but I think that we're happy to see it, especially after yesterday and the way that the, they uh, defeated Sentinels. They definitely knew exactly what to do in every second, in every instance, and could read into their opponent very well. I think that we should give more props to Solo. Yeah, yeah. now I know we've all be theorizing about, you know, the script, where it comes from. I know you and Brent in Bracketology. I think John Riot's name has been thrown in there a couple Many of times, times uh, <laughs> as well. But I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to look behind the curtain because today and for today only, we are going to bring out the Masters Magic 8 wheel. We're going to give it a spin and we're going to be able to answer oh. questions that all of our hearts truly, truly desire. So oh. uh, let's just get it started, Josh. I'm going to let you have your first question. Okay. My first question, an important one, not just for this tournament, but will, in the entire history of Valorant, Pacific ever win a trophy? Please, how have they not done it already? Oh. All of the Pacific that's analysts. Spin. That's a big spin. Oh, all of the spin. Pacific analysts just on edge here. <laughs> Remember, this is the truth. Here will we go, here we Pacific go. Pacific ever win a trophy? Oh! Yeah! No guarantee it's right here, but, but <laughs> ever, well, I mean, ever, maybe ever. at some point after today we can see if, it, if we can see if it's actually here. Yeah, I mean the wheel has spoken, so let's see, uh, Tom, what your question is going to be answered. Oh, mine, mine's a little bit more toxic. I feel. I said, I said, did loud underperform? Oh. You want to make here some enemies, go. don't you? Uh, I, no, no, I'm not making enemies. The, the wheel, the, the wheel, wheel is, is making, making enemies. enemies. It's a limp okay. roll, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> limp roll. Here we go. Oh, okay, right. there you go. Okay. exactly. Okay. It's, it, it, like it's it. an America's wheel right now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same, same. <laughs> it was like the audacity of Tom to even ask that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But Bea, surely you, you're going to bring us back with a better That's question. That's their best performance. Uh, mm. Are you instigating um, here? I might be. My question is going to be, will EMEA make global playoffs ever again? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Wheel, please, wheel. Oh. I don't ask for much in life. I'm so scared. Oh, That's God. so Doomer. I that can't is look. Like... I can't I'm look. I'm so scared. I can't look. I can't look. I can't look. Oh, don't. Please give me a oh, slay. Please, 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 please. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. 
<laughs> we're done. We're done. We're doomed. Why would you? Uh, I can't I mean, believe you it. You write the script, right? Why Who's would you fault? even do that? I mean, you, you've killed Yinsu. You've killed uh, Yinsu. I can't go on. This was going so <laughs> well. Go We've all, three of us have just lost our jobs. Oh, yeah. What's the point anymore? That's unlucky. <laughs> okay, I, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna do an easy one for the wheel. Okay, nobody has to be heartbroken oh. at this one. Uh, should we buy the Sentinels bundle? Should we actually do it? Okay. Go on. That's got to be a sleigh. Come on. Should we do it? I mean, now I don't have a region. <laughs> Can I be adopted by <laughs> Americas? I'm sure they'd be lucky to have you. The tension. Here we go. No, I'm nervous. Okay. Here we go. Oh. oh. Better not say. Yeah, that's, Zel that's Zelsa's job. We don't want to steal his job. <laughs> that's so. a great point. Okay. You've you got to leave it for him. Yeah, I think we have talked a bit too much about it anyway. So. Yeah. But ha yeah. Has any of you I bought the Sentinels bundle? I don't care. No I don't comment. Care. I don't care about the Sentinels bundle. What I'm looking for today is the Sentinels bungle. I want to see Paper X <laughs> move on to the final. Okay, well, that's what you think, but I want to know what you guys think at home in our MasterCard <laughs> fan poll. It's very simple. Who is moving on to the grand finals tomorrow to face Genji? Will it be Sentinels, like Sideshow uh, has said? Or oh, will it be Paper X? Because uh, the wheel said. So scan the QR code on your screen and cast your vote right now. And make sure you use the hashtags Valorant Masters and VCT so we can feature you on the show. If you have a question for the wheel, hey, let us know. Let us know. We might bring it out and give it another whirl uh, as the games go on. But for now, let's move on on to this huge match at hand because the reason these two teams I show even got to where they are right now is because they both lost to Gen G. Yeah, it's a really interesting fact that both of these teams have played similar opponents. And I feel like Gen G really demonstrated two core concepts, right, to be able to beat these teams. One is anticipation and the other is outpacing your opponent. And I think they anticipated everything that Paper X was going to do, so they were always ahead of them, and they outpaced Sentinels horribly. They were always making decisions quicker than Sentinels could. I think their reads as well were unbelievable, especially if you look at Split, the map, the Sentinels, they're the best team in the world. And then they went up against them, and every single time they were walking into an empty site, forcing Sentinels to retake, which Sentinels are good at, but not against Gen.G. It would be so crazy because tomorrow they have the chance of winning this entire tournament without dropping a match. And to me, it's back to what we were talking about yesterday on the show. This is like, a, they're like a motivational quote. It's like, work hard, do it in silence, and then show off the results. Yeah, for uh, Sentinels as well. Tekken, tens of Zekken, they've been unstoppable the entire... <laughs> it's going to happen. Tekken is here to stay. All right. uh, All right. uh, but, but Tom, what happened against Gen.G? I don't know. It, especially on tens, it looked like a different beast, but I even just feel like the impact that Zekken had was just missing. Mm. He was someone who was pretty much destroying the majority of opponents throughout the tournament so far. I'll tell you what happened. Gen G's players are just better. <laughs> Man, there were so many spots where they got into good positions to fight, and they just got outclassed. Uh, Tens of Zekin are unbelievable players, but yep. the players they're going up against today, we've seen Forsaken take over. We've seen yeah. something take over. You need to be getting this level of impact out of the guys, and, and it, it's all good having a game plan that sets you up for success. At the end of the day, you still got to click their heads, right? Yeah, definitely. They need to forget about what happened against Genji. There were also so many instances where they would go down first just because of being in positions that only Genji was able to punish. Now, will Paper X as the other Pacific team be on the same level? But well, we'll see. Well, especially if we're going to be seeing Split, which I think we will. We have seen I mean, Forsaken yeah. actually take over that map in crazy manners. I don't know if he'll be able to get those aces up. I know we talked about that <laughs> earlier in the tournament, but even something has started to come alive as well. So, yeah, I think they're going to need those superstars on the central I mean, side. Dude, yeah. look at, look at <laughs> yeah, that one! They, they flash beat Zekin in and Meteor just dodges it and gets the kill! No respect. <laughs> I mean, we heard Tenz in that press conference talk about uh, the, the drop in performance, and he said, it just felt like every time I was swinging Genji, I was swinging into three people. Yeah, he wasn't I think that time. Put, I, think, I, think, I think he's putting too much on himself. I do think that uh, it was more on the Genji side, having the correct read and actually knowing how to activate themselves against Sentinels. I mean, if he swings into three Paper X players, uh, what, how, how are we feeling about There's it? never three Paper X players in one place. <laughs> they're, they're always scattered across the map, so I think you'll be okay. I mean, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but also, we have heard a lot from our coaches here in Madrid as well, but are we buying what they are selling? It's time for Kaplan or Cap. Of course, uh, I'm going to give you guys a couple of quotes, uh, starting with the man Kaplan okay. as well. I want you to tell me if you're buying into what you're saying. Is it Kaplan or do you feel like maybe it's a little that bit That Cap fits Cap? really well, yeah. by the way. Um, <laughs> as well. So uh, let's start with the first quote here. He said, uh, lots to learn. Wish we didn't make the mistakes in the first place, but it is what it is. I take full responsibility. We will be better. Sideshow, Kaplan or Cap? Uh, no, 
little bit of both. I mean, he's probably referring to the fact that they had a game plan on Breeze that fell to pieces. Uh, I would say, you know, you want to get rid of that today. But I think this is kind of a lie, but the good kind of lie that helps your team's confidence. See, I'm again, going full cap. I'll, I'll be yeah? honest with you, I think it's full cap. It's the classic coach scenario after a match where you go, guys, it was all me. Let's ignore the fact that Tens had a bad performance today. No, it was me. It was because I picked the but wrong But those are the good kind of lies. Yeah, 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 the yeah, brunt. It's a good lie, but it's still cap. Hear me out. I think it's Kaplan. I think that he wants to give their uh, his players the chance to forget about what happened and just put everything on him so they can keep performing on this tournament, making the finals and getting that trophy. Fair. So it is Kaplan. Okay, we got two Kaplans and one Cap. I feel like you're out. Oh, he was a bit he, in the middle. He, he's on the fence, though. What's yeah. the there's, point? There's a little bit of both there. There's cap with the, yeah. Kaplan with the cap on. That's <laughs> he's, doing, he's doing what a coach needs to do in this situation, yeah, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's very end, right? He even tweeted mm. uh, back in EMEA as well. It's all me, it's all me. Every loss is on me and every win mm. is on the players. Uh, but let's move on to the side of Paper X again with Coach Alex. Is this going to be Kaplan or is this going to be Cap? He said, there's a lot of hesitation right now in the way we play and that actually hurt us. I think any team to be consistent, you need to be first and foremost, very confident in the way you play. Kakuka, is this Cap or Alex? <laughs> um, I think this is Cap. I, I think that if you're Paper Rex, with how much experience you have in international events, you have such a defined play style that everybody's able to recognize, you should be confident in it by now. And if that is the reason that you're not performing, maybe you're looking in the wrong spot to spot what's going wrong. Yeah, I think if for the time that that quote is taken from a little earlier in the tournament, Mm -hmm. He was bang on. There was a bit more hesitation. It didn't look as fluid. But now that they've got Monnet super diving in on Rays <laughs> and everybody's following up, it's not just Forsaken acing to win them rounds. Yeah. They've actually got systems that are working. Uh, some things, timings were fantastic when he played against Loud. Their read on the game is way better than it was at the start. So I think to some degree he was analyzing the, the issues correctly. The problem with all of that is how do you fix a hesitation problem? How yeah. do you give your players more See, confidence? I was going to say, I think it's 80% cap because I think... <laughs> At the beginning of the tournament, four of the five players didn't have any hesitation. They were still doing ridiculously aggressive things, but Munyet was hesitant. So he's the little 20% wiggle room I'll give. But now I, I don't think that's been the case, especially in their last match. I didn't see any hesitation whatsoever. Oh. Yeah. So we uh, agreements? Cap, cap, cap? Well, he's a cap, but we're, we're in the cap. Oh, oh, you're, oh, okay. You're different. Yeah. 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 You're different again. I just, but what can I say? I believe authority. <laughs> <laughs> you is, tell me something, I believe it. But the thing is, what do you, uh, in terms of it being cap, what do you want him to say, though? Well, what is it that you want to hear from him when it comes to Alex? Um, I'd so, say it's. I, I mean, I, I, what I'd like to see is him to not dwell on the fact that he can't figure out the solution immediately. I feel like a lot of what we heard from Alex is, I know that we have problems, but there are so many different ways that we could fix things. I don't know what it is, but the players are already figuring it out live in the server. You see him doing it. Yeah, but that's the thing. If you want to put your time and your energy into something, I feel like that is such a broad just him. Uh, term. Uh, just him. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just something. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Let's just get Sorry. something just Tom on you. something that can... Better, better, play better with the opponent. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult now. I'm sorry. Right, okay. Thank you, Tom. We, we've talked about Cap. We've talked about Kaplan. But let's hear from the man, Kaplan. Or Cap. Okay. I don't know. Because uh, Mika Fabs is standing by with what I think is Coach Kaplan right now to see how he is feeling today. Hey, Kaplan. So uh, that was a really tough loss yesterday. Uh, can you tell us how you managed to prep the boys for a comeback today? Yeah, so yesterday, one of the biggest problems was that we started really kind of shaky and nervous and therefore didn't play our game. So after some thought, I've concluded uh, there wasn't enough pressure on them, so I'm adding a lot more. I've told them if we lose today, they have to swim home. And just to double down on the pressure, I'm going to pick Breeze, I think. Oh, oh OK. Thanks. OK. Wait. That's all right, all right. Is that Cap or Kaplan? Well, that was Kaplan. I just saw him. <laughs> yeah, it's also completely true. I've seen the, the, <laughs> the Google Maps swim route. How, oh, how, how long does it take? Oh, uh, they're not going to make Swimming. it. I'm afraid does, does they're Google not going to make it. It's, it's a bit far. Do they have the, that? How long does they it take? Should. Swim? They should. If it I don't. think the, the original thing that Kaplan said that they came in nervous, mm -hmm. I actually think they didn't look themselves in terms of how confident they were swinging and taking those fights at the start on mm. split. So. I'd like to see them get into the groove of this match really early on. They talked about how Zelsus is so important for the vibes and stuff. I think he got rattled a little bit yesterday, whether or not he would admit it. I'm saying it's Cap. I think that it got to their heads the fact that Split was so one-sided on the side of Gen G that after after that map, they were out. What about the Mentally. Breeze, though? You think that's Cap? They're going to pick Breeze? Yes. What they might yes, do, because technically cool. down the line, if, if they just don't ban it, then they might end up picking it just because it's a best of five. Might be yeah. Kaplan. Might be Kaplan. Maybe. Yeah. I doubt it, but it might be. 
All right, let's move on to uh, Paper X because uh, for them in this tournament, every single time we've spoken to them, they've done this little rating thing. You know, Forsaken said we're six out of ten coming into this mm -hmm. tournament, and then you had a uh, Devai yesterday. He hit us with a ten out yeah. of ten. So I wanted to put you guys to the test. Let's, as a desk, rate some of uh, what Paper X have been up to. So I, I see you have your whiteboards here. Show whiteboard. me the numbers. Show me the numbers. You want them oh. numbers? Oh. All right, an eight, a two, and a five. All right, okay. Kukuka, what is it about Paper X that's given you a two right Hear now? Hear me out. I just <laughs> focused on one thing. You know, I just focused on one aspect. You know, what makes Paper X Paper X? the crazy compositions and the crazy playstyle of being extra aggressive. Then I just focus on the compositions that they have been playing here. I just picked out some of them because there are so many crazy things. Just looking at the Ascent, no Sova, no Jet, no Sentinel. The way they make it play is something goes and makes a play with the Operator. They apply a lot of pressure with that. I think it's very easy to counter. And I think that Sentinels might have a very good read on that. For the Bind, I feel like I have a problem with something, but I don't really have it. It's the Reina. I've seen it a couple of times. I'm not sold by it. I really like the Harbor, but... Mm. And then the split. You come in. I thought that we were going to get that triple duelist action. I feel like they're very unsure in why they're choosing this composition. And now it is too late to make the changes. So I was adding points for creativity, and then they were going down as I was getting like, the rain and all that. They won though, so yeah. how's, how's only a two? Yeah, ridiculous. But because it could be better. <laughs> top, top, I want more. Top I'm three a paper team, girl. two out of ten. Are we in agreement that in terms of the comps, no. at least, it's a two? No. Oh, no? Well, how, what are okay. you rating for? That, I, I'll, I'll give them a at ten. least a three. I, no, I think <laughs> they, you need them to play some bizarre stuff when it comes to their compositions, and I think that they've actually started working. So you're a big Rainer fan. I think it's a bit of rain. Yeah, <laughs> dude, they, they, they're gonna three zero today. We're playing Rainer and Gecko off. Right, what number? Then, what number are you giving uh, right, for yeah. the comps? For the comps. For the comps, I don't know, maybe like a, a six or seven or something. Okay, I drop like, my I, five. Dude, I'm down for them. <laughs> but the thing that I'm rating the eight here is the improvement that they've made over the course of the tournament. If they were a six out of ten earlier when they were playing against EDG, oh, when they were struggling, the when they were losing, exactly. <laughs> I've added on the two from your compositions, <laughs> and we've got to eight. Because I feel like at the start of the tournament, they were a little out of sync. They couldn't really get Monia online, and they hadn't had enough time, I think, playing the compositions that Alex wanted them to go towards heading into Madrid. And then you see them towards the end of the tournament here. They're making risks, they're finding timings, their read on the game is really good, and they're playing off each other. Look at them baiting Dubai in this situation, forcing mistakes out of opponents, getting Mind Freak into the clutch. We haven't seen this kind of stuff happening from them until the end of the tournament. They're getting in the groove. It's an eight compared to last year. Do you, do you agree? Are we bumping it to I do, I do, that? I do. The, the development has definitely been there within the tournament, and but I think it's also what we expected from Paper X. I, yeah, I'll give them eight. Yeah, they're all right. You they're know. all right. I they're, mean, they're, they're not at ten yet. It's right. a good thing that you said they're all right because the five feels like it, it's a very middle ground. It actually sounds yeah. like just an all right. Do you know what? I've got my leather jacket on. It makes me a vibes man. That's what I'm looking <laughs> at right now, and I think the vibes for five of the players or five of the people have been very, very good. Laughing, joking, having a great time. No desk slamming for five of the people. <laughs> now, there is one well. other person on this team, which I think is a one out of 10, and it's this man on your screen right now. Alex has been uh, getting a little bit frustrated. I'd say maybe even more so than what we've seen before. So it puts me bang in the middle, Sue. Do you guys but agree? I did slam the desk at all times, but it was like excitement. It was like a good yeah, slam. Yeah, it's a, it's a good slam. The duality of it as well, because Alex is such a fun guy. He's always smiling. You would find him. He would be the happiest on earth. It's the coach booth. I'm saying that's, that's, that's <laughs> just the, the room. Vibe. He just that's gets in and he's runner. grumpy. To be fair, we've seen Chet in the dungeons it's before. Yeah. And he's, <laughs> he's not been loving it. It's, it's crazy how Alex is thinking about this team when they're winning and they're top three at a Masters <laughs> currently with chances of making their third final. And he's like, I'm really unhappy with the way that we're playing. Actually, it's all individual skill. No, no none of the synergy that we've built up. And it's like, they're, they're winning. They're winning. <laughs> it's crazy because he has those kind of reactions even in the rounds that they win. Yeah. We will go to coach and be like, God, it's not the big that we were supposed to do. <laughs> hey, that was, a, but, that was quite a good pick. But, yeah. but I'll tell you yeah. what, he never delivers it to the players. That's something yeah. that's very yes. important. Uh, articulating when he's in interviews, he knows when to communicate and how to communicate to the players to get the best out of them. And he doesn't bring any of that frustration or anger with him into the comms. Tries to keep it good and positive for the players. And you can see that that's where that differential comes from you're yeah. talking about, Tom. He doesn't bleed it into dragging the whole team. He takes like it out on the desk, so he doesn't take it out on the players. Yes. That's why we've had to reinforce the deck. Okay, we'll just do a very quick, uh, I guess, a rating, a combined rating. Are we taking an average? Are we adding everything ten. together? What are they right now? Well, that means I'm correct, right, with my uh, five. Well, if, about... if ten was how they played last year, though, where they made, you know, 
the two big final, or one big final, I suppose, mm. and made it deep in tournaments. They're, they're not that far away at the moment, in my opinion. I give them a 7.5. I, I was going to say, I'm not kidding. I was going to say 7.5. All right. 7.5 out of 10 it is. But for more <laughs> on Paper Race, let's send it back to Mika Fabs and Monia for some vibe check. Hey, Monia, what's up? You feeling good? Yeah, feeling good. Okay, good, because like everybody loves, you know, so loves it when PRX are like feeling great and they love the PRX vibes. Can you tell us though, you guys have been staying quite humble. Tell us how the team is feeling today, especially since now you have made it into the top three here at Masters Madrid. Mm, definitely unexpected, but I think every time like when we go to lower bracket, we just felt like more no fear, you know? So yeah, we'll see today. Eager to see that fearlessness on stage. Good luck. I mean, the vibe seems good. The vibe seems like it, it is there. What did you guys make of that? Well, Alex isn't there. He's <laughs> <laughs> such a hater, man. Oh, such no. a hater. Manya's it's got crazy. great vibes. He's adorable. Like, who doesn't love Manya? It, uh, it has or been Manya. Or Manya. has been a lot of pressure on Manya, though, this run that they've had. All of the eyes are on him. All of the public pressure's on him. Totally. And even the internal communications are that this is, Alex said, this has been the biggest roster change they've had. It's them getting Manya up to speed. When you have the focus on you like that, yeah, the pressure's gonna be enormous. And I've actually been really impressed at how he's stood up to the big pressure, to the stage, and found his moments. And when you play on Paper X, you have to be so risk positive. Yes. Uh, you can't allow the fear to make you play in a safer manner. And he's just been great. I think that we've seen it also in the past, right? Where uh, I believe it was at Tokyo where we had CGRS and he was also stepping up and everybody had eyes on him. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned Tokyo because oh. Mind Freak did as well in this tweet right after they beat Loud. Uh, he said, it's another miracle run by us. 2-0 Loud feels like Tokyo all over again. Now, I'm a little bit worried about the second Mm. because Tom at Tokyo they had a sub so I can understand why is that he, was like a miracle yeah. is, is he but does that mean he's calling Monia a sub because that, that's really <laughs> toxic if that's the way you're looking at it but I don't think he is I think it's just that they've come out they've not looked their best but they're still beating teams that realistically in each time we're going oh they probably lose to loud now right oh they probably lose to this team and they're just managing to continue their run through the tournament and at this point you're getting to the stage where you get that paper X delusion where you go they, they, they might just win but yeah. that's the thing, it's always a might, right? And it's actually when we get this late into a tournament, when we get to those best of fives, that that is when Paper X just falls down, when they crumble under the pressure, because they have been unsuccessful in winning a single best of five here in international events. Oh, don't remind me. Don't remind me. I mean, if, it, me if it's going to be like uh, Tokyo all over again, I really hope it's not. But they have that, to finish second. Face. Only one of yeah. them can be true. <laughs> that is true. The narratives, there's too many narratives yeah. going on, I feel like. The, how, how worried are you about that, though? The fact that every time they've got to that best of five, a uh, position has just never gone their way. Well, you have to you have to remember that best of fives only happen when you play against the top teams. You don't play best of fives at the beginning of the tournament where you're really heavy favorites against the people you play against. So it's not just BO fives. They, yeah, they do have some map pool weaknesses, but it's also because their opponents are great. Yeah, well, I believe in Paper X. Uh, what a shocker. Uh, but it's time to get the results of our MasterCard fan poll and see if you guys believe in Paper X because, yes, you do! Let's go, Paper people, rise up! <laughs> Nice. Uh, yeah, anyway, what did you guys think of this? <laughs> <laughs> you just, just lost your mind. Paper it. people <laughs> rise up. Yeah. 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 Uh, they were paper people at, you know? I can't believe they beat Sentinels in a poll. Yeah. Time of day. Big deal. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Something like that. No, Could be. no, no. It's just they're right. They're just right. Mm. I, I think that uh, going back to what you were saying uh, earlier about DRX, you know, we've mentioned so much the fact that the usual suspects are not here, that this has to be the time that Paper X manages to finally win a title. Yeah, but I think that the opposition they're playing against is extremely tough. I think Sen yeah. have probably got an advantage in the map pool department, if yeah. you're looking at what they're going to be running into. And when Paper X win, it feels like it's late in the maps. It feels like it's based on a lot of individual stuff and hard reads. I'm not sure how consistent it's going to be. I mean, there's one thing that's more important than this lower final, more important arguably than the entire final as well, which is the classics uh, kill is leaderboard. It, it is. Uh, for, is it? for one man, it is, and his name is Zelsis. If you take a look at this, Tom, Zelsis Ooh. has officially taken oh. over Moniet, and he's uh, up there with 20 kills. Does that just mean he got a lot of classic kills in the game that they lost? Yes. Is that because they Yeah, because they were ecoed yeah. so much. Yeah, they ecoed so much. They don't even buy shares. And, it, you know, uh, he always takes it, his moments to, like, show the, the bundle. Oh, Taking yeah. The real mm. I mean, he takes moments to show off more than the yeah. bundle, doesn't he? I, He's showing off the but bundle. He said it. <laughs> <laughs> the okay. what? The what? Uh, 
Do you want, yeah, should we slow off? that down? Yeah, what, what, what did you say? It? He's flashing his ass around. <laughs> That's what's happening. Am I unclear? Am I unclear that Celsius is caked up and takes every opportunity? All right, then. Cool. Oh my god. Yeah, so next the leaderboard for the... Uh, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. We don't, have, <laughs> we don't have a leaderboard for that, but what we, what we do have, of course, uh, is the Matt Vitos. This will be a best of five, so let's send it down to Victoria and the coaches and see where we're going to be heading in today. All right, welcome to Math Select presented by Omen for the lower finals. This is where we are transitioning to a best of five. Sentinels, you come from the upper bracket, so you'll be higher seed. Would you like team A or team B? Team A, please. Team A, so PRX, you will be team B. And we will start with your first band. Band Breeze. Breeze, and your band? Band Icebox. Band Icebox. So map number one from Sentinels. Pick Lotus. Lotus, side on Lotus. Attack. Attack, and map number two. Uh, pick Ascent. Ascent, and side on Ascent. Defense. Defense. Map number three. You have bind, split, and sunset. Pick split. Pick split. Side on split. Pick defense. Defense. And then map number four, you have bind and sunset. Sunset. Okay. And side on sunset. Defense. Okay. Map number five by default is going to be bind, paper X, side on bind. Attack. Attack. All right. Good luck to you both. Thanks. Good luck, man. Well, Kaplan was capping because, Tom, they banned the Breeze. They're not going to let it through. Yeah, I, I don't think it's their ban. I'm, I'm really that interested. I'm, I think I'm a little bit more worried about what Paper X have done because I, I feel like they had a real opportunity to take away a decent map for Sentinels rather than banning a map that they both don't really play. And so I feel like the map pool now lead almost even further into Sentinel's favor. Yeah, I totally agree. Also, the, the Lotus with the composition that uh, Paper X play, I think that is very easy to, to exploit and very easy to be prepared to. Yeah, I think that when you look at the map pool, uh, one of the big things that stands out that everybody's talking about too is that when Sentinels play Jet, they're one and seven on those maps. Yeah. And two of those have just been removed, one by their opponent. And it's not because Zekin's a terrible player, it's because those are the maps, in my opinion, that they put the least time into, and they just happen to also be the, the Jet maps. But this is looking good for Sen. Yeah, uh, is it looking like we could go the distance? And if we do go the distance, does it get better for Paper X? I think how, that how do you know? We've barely seen yeah. either team play Bind. I think Sen only played it once against Heretics. But that's the thing, are we even going to get to Bind that's also what, yeah. talking about the form and how the teams are going to come onto the stage? Uh, yesterday, Devai was telling me in the interview that they feel like uh, their compositions being so unique and people having so many bots on them, they're easy to counter. So they also acknowledge that kind of flaw in themselves. I, I do think getting into the late game though, like if they can perform well on Split and also then Sunset has been a fantastic map for Paper X. I think Bind ends as sort of like a toss-up at the end, so I think if Paper X get that far, I actually do think they have a very good chance to take it. I also think that the way that they play on Ascent is difficult to play against, yeah. and it's uh -huh. not been a great map for Sentinels overall. They don't look like the, the best team out there, so it, it is super possible you could get a 2-1 lead, actually, for um, Paper X to start the series. No, I think actually Ascent, before coming into the tournament, I think that Genji showed uh, when they played against each other how not easy, but how you can counter them. I think that something is going to be always one of the questions. How are they going to be shutting down his operator on the gecko on whatever he's uh, playing? That is one of the big questions. If they're able to deal with that and some of the positions that they take at the beginning of, of the rounds, especially on Ascent, I think that Sentinels have a good edge to I win mean, here. Loud and KC, though, both struggled on Ascent against mm. Paper X. It's not easy, I don't think. Yeah, I, I think at this point, though, the one thing that does worry me for them is just the tape that they have on it. Because they play sort of a lot of compositions, especially in that last match for Paper X, where I'm looking at them and going, it is the individuals that are now winning that for you. And if you've given that little bit of extra time to Kaplan to kind of look through and go, OK, they're doing these crazy aggressive defensive side pushes. How can we shut that down? Can we play our default properly? And can we almost wait for them? Because the team that managed to beat Sentinels was the really structured team. Paper X are not that. Yeah, exactly. And I think that Sen needs to go back and and just think about the positives that they have. And also before coming into the tournament, I think that their retics are so beautiful and it's going to be one of the determinant keys for today if they're able to just maybe give Paper X that space and no fall into uh, their game. Can they do it? Can Paper Rex pull off the uh, the token miracle, I guess, is what they're calling it. So do you guys believe in that? Yeah, they absolutely Ooh. can. They, they Isn't totally the can. Tokyo miracle them losing now? No, wait, well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Copenhagen. Yeah. Copenhagen. Yeah. And champions. There's a bad choice. Yeah. Yes.
They, they totally can. Totally, it's yeah. about getting big performances out of individuals and coming up with combos and uh, pace that is going to outperform what Sentinels are anticipating. Gen G were faster than Sen. Paper X could do it too. Yeah, well, it's time to get this best of five series started. Sentinels versus Paper X, where the winner will take on Gen G tomorrow in the grand finals. The Masters Madrid lower bracket final starts right here, right now. So I was like, hey, let's go to Madrid. Let's go see the games. And you guys want to come in? You guys want to cheer with him? Come in, come in, come in. Woo! Go Sentinels! Are you from Spain or did you travel to be here? I traveled here from Germany yesterday. Do you have any uh, predictions for the finals of the tournament? Oh my god. Like, in my in my head, I won PRX because they're my favorite Pacific team and I've been supporting them since last year, since they had such a great run. But the crossfire setup is too strong, it's too damn strong, and PRX seal it away! What a time, what a game to come alive! I mean, I don't even expect how we're here. I thought we already going back after the Carmen Corp win, you know. We felt depressed. Somehow we still managed to win. The time is running out and now it's gone as Gen G 13 to 3 Sentinels. We are going to be playing against Pyrex. They've been here before. It will not be an easy series. They play very aggressive. They don't really care about advantages. They like playing their way. I would like to think that we could punish it. We just have to come in and play more together as a team. Sentinels, this time we will have zero fear. We just beat loud, and now we're beating the Americas. We're not out yet. We're coming for you. What do we want to say to the fans? Um, thank you guys so much for supporting us throughout uh, this whole this whole run. It's been a wild past like few months, honestly, even just this tournament and the off season and kickoff leading up to it, it's been a crazy ride. I know that um, previous years has been kind of rough as a Sentinels fan, but it's looking up. I'm feeling confident. My team's feeling confident. Couldn't have done it without your support. Thank you so much. I hope you guys keep supporting us. I mean, I know some of you don't believe in our new W Gaming, but I hope you guys just keep trusting us. We're trying our best and I hope we show a good performance, you know. And yeah, spread love. Hopefully we win. And I kind of want to beat Sentinel, you know? So yeah. Zelsis, we are coming for you. Awesome. Let's go.
challenges just to get here. But none of that matters. It is going to be about who can show up on this stage today and get into that grand finals tomorrow. Yeah, two teams devoted to their fans, saying that most of what they do is because and thanks to them as well. The place is crowded, just looking at what is going to be of these two teams. Yeah, I, I think, honestly, this first map could be almost a trendsetter. Like, I think it favors Sentinels heavily, but it's one of those scenarios where pay breaks get off the mark quickly. We could be seeing a dangerously quick series. And I think the player to watch here is something. We're expecting him probably to be pulling out the jet because that's one of the big compositions that they've been running on Lotus. It's unusual. You're confident? <laughs> well, who knows? Who knows? Uh, something could be playing anything, right? Yeah. But mm -hmm. if he is playing a role where he's able to have enormous impact and pulling out the operator, then he becomes the pivotal player in my head to have that impact and outweigh the compositional disadvantage that they've got. Can something's jet go against Celsius Odin? Josh, <laughs> not gonna can he not take it? Dude, Celsius took a long time to get online in the game against Gen G. He was getting bullied in the first map. He woke up about halfway through Lotus. So, I don't know. I, I feel like this Sentinels team has shown that they can be rattled at this point. But you have to be immaculate. And Gen G is right now. I don't know where the paper X is going to be today. That's the thing. Going into this map in particular, you mentioned something. I think the duelist on the other side in Zekin. Yeah. This is a map where he truly thrives. Like, the space he's able to take, especially on their C-site executes, yeah. he's just devastating as he enters into the site. And sassy supportive utility is bang on almost every single single time. That duo together in this map is going to be hard to beat. You need to look at the reliable players. I think that Zekin is one of them, especially on this map. On the other side, how crazy is Paper Rex going to be? We know that for the last matches that these, te these teams have played, they've had shaky starts. Those pistol rounds sometimes do not go as planned. And if they do, maybe it's what everything that they get in that half. I'm going to be looking, assuming that we see Forsaken Cypher coming online. To refer back to your point, Tom, Zekin was unbelievable on those C-site entries. Yeah. He was just amazing versus the game against Gen G. But if you've got trips to try to stop that, I'm wondering how that flavor works out. Yeah. And it will be that classic composition from Paper X with the double duelist and the Cypher. And it, it's actually more difficult to raise entry against that than the Killjoy. Yeah, but but the rest of the team is going to have such a much easier time. There's no Killjoy, there's no Viper. Like, you're going to have you know, potentially a lot of freedom. That is where PaperX has to respond fast. They have to move around the map, they have to put the pressure, and especially Mind Freak, he needs to be very mindful of that paranoia usage. Yeah, and what is it, Tom, that makes Sentinel so good here? What, what, what are some of the difficulties PaperX could run into? I think firstly they're adaptive, uh, as it was mentioned, I think Zelsa's playing like an Odin all over the map is always difficult when you're coming up against that defensive side, but I also think they are very good at that sort of push and pull of the map to get into those entries. Well, I can't wait, we have two great teams on stage and two great casters on standby as well. Get ready for a certified banger, it's Pansy and Hypoc. Thank you so much, Sue and the desk. Yeah, this is an exceptional head-to-head -head here, Mike. It's hard to split it. You look at the teams that they faced to get to this point, near on mirrored. I mean, this is probably one of the most exciting best of fives we've had in a minute. Yeah, definitely. I think former side, doubters aside, the fact that Paperwork is still here, yes. still alive and kicking, still delivering, is such a testament to the potential, the talent on this roster. It has always been, it's been questions the whole way along. The things kicked off here on Lotus. Apex gonna make some progress towards A here. Zelsis, I'm not even sure actually if you got some information there, but backs away at the right time. Smoke coming through. We'll confirm some presence behind this. Apex just shift walking up. Yeah, they're pretty close as well. Now, fortunately for Zelsis, he does have John QT nearby. Something is on the site. The blind didn't work well enough to be able to get past Zelsis! Pick it up where he left off. That classic looks good in his hand. Sassy in support. Divide the last alive. And he's hunting. Celsius, just around that corner. Can Divide do anything here? No, oh, absolutely no. not. Look at that poor on of utility. Sent off to a flawless beginning. Aprex just trying their luck, trying to walk up here, play contact up towards A, but again, that first exchange of utility, the snake bite coming down, something gets separated. Unfortunately, Celsius added another couple of kills to that yes, classic sir. leaderboard here. Unfortunately, beheads. Something and one yet. Takes the bite right out of this execution. A flawless start here for Sentinels. You could have talked about potentially that aspect of coming off the win or the loss to get to this point. Obviously, that Gen G matchup, probably still fresh within the Sentinel mind. But again, 
Coming back in off to a good start. Correct all those wrongs. And back in that confident position. And a patient start here. You know who you're against is Paper X. Got to be careful, got to be cautious. Tens. Going to be noted early. Still sticking around though. Flash is perfect. Nade won't actually do any damage, but does force Tens back a little deeper. Something still desperate to try and find a pick yet. Let's burn up the dash though, so he's going to have to slow things down a little bit as we hit the minute mark. No real pressure point for Paper X to try and exploit. Does Tens go farming here? Very much in a position Feels for Feels like it. it. <laughs> yeah, that smoke the only thing keeping Paper X safe currently. Just about to dissipate, and he dips away. Zekin, though, still with eyes on, going to now post the paranoia. Close enough to do some damage for Seiken, though, unable to convert that to any form of kill. As Tens holds the line, giving Mind Freak something. And it was Devai still alive. Yeah, there we go. This is lovely stuff from Sentinels. Five alive again. Not suffering a casualty yet. Back-to-back -back flawless here will give Sentinels a massive cushion Huge. in terms of the funds here early on. Obviously coming to the next round with a little bit of a disadvantage in terms of the weaponry, but uh, I mean, Sassy with a rifle, maybe an opportunity for him to get something done. Sentinels carry this remaining. confidence across, maybe get a little proactive here. Round to do it in. Yep, maximize their chances of really trying to do some damage at least, but mm, an honest go of this round three. I wondering if Sassi was going to send that out, maybe get some early info. Ops against it. Forsaken. Cage no subtlety to his presence here. But I'm not even sure meantime, actually if, if that was after the, the barrier job, sorry. Mm, the, the, no, whether or not the spy cam kind of called Sassy off that reveal, mm. expecting a little bit of pressure towards B, potentially. Paperx haven't really revealed themselves over towards Rubble just yet. Nothing out of the ordinary, really, from Sentinels here either. Kind of playing it rather standard, even with those Stinger Spectres and that Bulldog in the hands of Sassy. Sight now, pressured, something. Maybe going first and actually overwhelmed, isolated again. These problems re-emerge, and what a chance for success now for Sen. Can't quite get the weapons, but they're in touching distance. And PRX down two players is a huge loss here. Divide, looking for something, but Sen's actually slipping into drop here. He's going to send the paranoia. Expecting too much of a push here, but Forsaken, the one to wrap this, will find Zelsis. Trying to allocate some safety on the site, maybe get that plant a feasible option. They're going to go for it now. Limited utility left on Paper X. Sen, similar position, a touch here and there. You can hear it just going through from Sassy then. And they wait, poised, flooding back into the site. Mind Freak, great pick up towards Zekin, but it's still dangerous. Still a man advantage to Sentinels here. Can they close that final gap or can Devai dig in his heels? This could be huge for Mind Freak, but it's not clean on the first attempt with an opportunity. Sentinels still going. I was worried they were playing an outstanding, a, a traditional approach, and it still worked. Paper X sends something in. Monia into the back lines once again, but this utility completely splits this execute up. Unfortunately, oh, it's the perfect time actually for John QT to find contact or at least be seen on heaven. He plays in his teammate. And immediately then you see the flip all the way back into a passive hold. They want the time to run down. Allow Paperx to get themselves stabilized and Sentinels capitalize on the numbers advantage. A very early time out here, Lauren. Yeah, this is incredibly early. Brown I mean, this has been a recurring trend as well. We've seen uh, Alex burn up, you know, timeouts in the first half by round eight, by round nine almost. It's just, what do they do with this? I, I, they've been able to creep close to sites. They've been getting right next to be able to get that plant down, but every single time they capitulate there. Yeah, I mean, there's two very, very clear examples of, of maybe a requirement to change this approach. Both something and one yet not really finding any value find themselves split in two rounds. Whether or not now Zelsis and John QT can play with that a little bit. Oh yeah, subvert expectations now. They get to start enjoying themselves a little bit after such a robust start. I mean, two back-to-back -back flawless rounds. Ridiculous. And the round three. And the bonus. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh that again. It it just it it just kind of whips my mind back to that game that we saw against Gen G, where Sen looked completely out of it, which was 
wild to me, right? It felt completely out of character because these guys had been just on the money the whole way through. But the question does become, can Paper X cause those same issues? So far, not been the case. Going to go for a, you know, a touch of a purchase here. Not too much Thank weight you. behind it. Two stingers, sheriffs, and that bulldog in the hands of Mind Freak. But they need to make impact, Mike. As silly as that sounds, they just haven't quite been threatening enough yet. Sure, and with two flawless rounds as well, something not very close to his ultimate. One yet, better progress, but still three away from the showstopper. Be crucial ultimate to a round like this, but Paperx seemingly looking to push and prod a little more in this round. Try and bait a peek out somewhere across the map, but we have actually seen a big adjustment here on the defense. It's tens to solo hold down rubble. Don't QT and Zelsis now. Side by side once again, Zelsis done damage previously with this weapon. Looked fantastic with it. He did, he really did. He made it work, looked comfortable, didn't look just, it was very one-dimensional. Absolutely not. Something tries to get healed up. Second bite of the cherry, Zelsis still gonna catch him. It's at least allowed a plant to come in. That's not bad, Paper X will take that. But can they defend it? These walls feel like paper when that gun's in play. Zek in the one to find Monyet hit. And we look towards the rest. Who's remaining? Forsaken, Divide, Mind Freak. Desperately nice trying to hold on. Didn't quite get too affected by that. But that vice-like grip gets brought into play when Ten starts to play through by the door. The flood on the site. It's there on Flawless again. Mind Freak nowhere to go. And Sentinels looking genuinely flawless here, Mike. Only one casualty on the way in. Paper X, a little bit of threat to this, but again, hesitancy to, to really dig any deeper. Try and convert that into any sort of comfort here. I mean, the amount of pressure that Zelsus is applying from inside this smoke. Yeah. Can't really blame Paper X in this scenario. <laughs> oh, come off it. Okay, at least there's a purchase now. You can see the rifles coming out. Hoping Forsaken gets that full buy in here. Looking at the armor. I'll find you. Uh, yeah, no, no armor on Forsaken. Um, so that's a little bit of a problem. Maybe just looking to play late here. Be the second layer to any sort of uh, set up for something. But Zekin looking to get ahead of the curve. Oh. Caught by the paranoia. Showstopper sent out, but nothing on the other end of it. No, just teetering on the edge of commitment there, but deciding against it. Monyet going to pick up another towards his ult. One off now. Very close by with a couple here. Devi, I think, two away. Nice to bring into effect, but a different, a, 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 a tangible pace change and a very near miss there. Tens. Going to note the player, but didn't quite connect towards it. But again, Paper X look a little lost on this one. Uh, or maybe not lost, but just adjusting their approach quite late in the round, 40 seconds. They're, I don't know what they're expecting to come into towards that seaside. We know that Zelsis well, will be present. <laughs> I don't know if they're expecting uh, Zelsis to still be here. Not necessarily any clear indications of a difference in setup, but that'll be the confirmation for Zelsis at least. Paper X still taking just their time now, here. Yeah. Yeah. Zelsis, so nearby, undiscovered. He could be such a problem for them, not this time. On yet, denies it. Great pickup, perfect follow up. Something answering back. That's Tens dealt with that Zelsis gone. The first two responders to the site. And now the three trying to come back in are a little ways off. Zekin's still alive, Sassy there and John QT could still cause a couple of issues. Monyet goes down, the gates start to open, but the cross is being watched. Forsaken's position is excellent, as is something. Sassy, this is gonna, I mean, this is a tall, tall task. Time is. Really good damage. Tick. Yeah, unconfirmed. And they're still posturing here, and that's it. Mind Freak, gonna put the full stop on the end of that sentence. Paper X get themselves on the board now. It feels extremely dicey to be hitting towards this site again. Late round, yeah. Zelsis, all he really needs to do is find a little bit of damage, maybe even a wall bang, but slight overcommitment from him. Monyet's the one to punish. Well navigated by Paperx nonetheless, who get themselves a couple of ultimates online now. Devi yet to get on the board, but Seekers here and available. Something, an operator in hand now. He's been deadly this event. Eating up the last few series as well with it. But, chip damage came in uh, yeah, I was going to say <laughs> an, an indicator maybe the Paper X are happy to 
continue slowing things down. He's not with this early presence shown towards B. It's quite not committed just yet, though. No, still, still around. Made it to cross over towards the door, so it could be again looking to explore, exploit that C site. Seek is going to come in. Zelsis needs to evacuate the site here. Monyet is commanding all this space. Yeah, this he's is following that Seeker all the way he can. Going to post it. Doesn't get what he wants from it, but he's still, he's got them all of this safety! And wait, John QT just got two back! Something wait, tent! Excuse oh wow. my god, what just happened this round? Drifting alongside each other. But it comes down to two. Divine and Forsaken with the time on their side. Ten still alive, takes a TP. John QT and Zekken nearby now. Forsaken, dicey way to play, but caught off guard. Tens goes down. Now information free flowing from the ult. They're gonna note it, they're gonna see it. Forsaken needs to deliver on it. He can't. Zekken takes him away, Divai. His moment to shine. Can he hold this? Yes, for the first he can. The second, absolutely, Divai! Taking Paper X with a second now. Yet to get on the board, but three kills on the round to find the Red Bull clutch, Lauren. Beautiful stuff from Divine. and one of the biggest criticisms being, you know, the value that Paperwax have been unable to find on the back of his utility here in the post plant. Everything that he needs to convert this round. And Odin on top, salt in the wounds for Sentinels. It feels like it's going to be such a volatile matchup between these two. High tempo. But again, looking Careful. at Paper X here, still showing a little bit of caution. That pace changer came in after the timeout, once the buy came in, has awarded them two good rounds here. The question then becomes, does Zen have an answer? What do they have back to this? And again, the adjustment in place here, Mike, we're seeing tens back towards that seaside. So Paper X trying to set a paranoia in motion off this spy camp. Zekin. And actually, when those Zekins checked it, Sassy's the one to find the first Zekin to follow up. That's a two for two. To get away! Whoa. No, mind freak! What a shot! Catching second in the heels, yeah. Midway as he was trying to get out of danger, and this time it's the two for Sentinels. Does Devi catch? I don't oh. think he caught him. Oh no. my word! Tens has been played in here. A second time, he's in a really awkward spot. The smoke behind him. He's not noted any player. He's going to hear the door turn. But the question mark of mind freak again. That late round positioning. Oh my God, Zelsis! Slides in and finds Mind Freak. You got a 1v2 in you here? Not well, available. Yeah? Tough in the 1v2 to really guarantee value Mind off that. Planted. Something posted up with the operator. You can see on the x ray here, Devi looking a little curious towards spawn as well. Mm. Still got a flash to work with yeah. in the hands of Devi. There it goes. Didn't catch towards CT, so eliminating the options. And maybe Zelsis. Yeah, he's thinking wants now he's doing that. Yeah, he wants to play off that. But it's not like Devi has turned his eyes away from this and the potential of a taste of the own medicine waiting around this corner. Zelsis, you can hear the spam. He wants it back, he's not gonna get it. Devi, showing him how it's done. And Paper X, they're clawing back into this after what was a near on flawless start from Sentinels. Crowd wants it. Yeah, starting to get behind them now, a run of three rounds. A really bizarre exchange here, but it's Mind Freak to find two on the back of this. Make that a third onto tens as well. In fact, he stuck around there yeah. after that smoke, the dog, the clear, everything. They still considered it. Very heads really up. heads up. Jinx. Of course we jinxed. <laughs> it's going to be a quiet cast. Anyway, <laughs> back into this one. It looks like maybe a brawl begins. Now, tens, remember that classic in hand, what he was able to do from here. That first glance back at him on the international stage certainly enamored a lot of us. But for now, no test. Paper X show a little presence, but then peel away. Something a little desperate for this opener. Zekin not going to give anything away, actually. Something wide swings onto the angle. Zekin to punish. Opener found here. here. Just was all intense posting up a little deeper here. Zekin already hitting preemptive rotation. Oh, Monietto! That's a John down. Oh, oh, got a second. Oh. What a start from him into this one. And a catch for Forsaken on the other side of the map. A whole new team born here for Paper X. They needed a comeback. They needed that resurgence after the start, and they got it. They got it in spades here. 
walking down the site. That's a problem for Mindfree, gotta be cautious now. Just about slips away before Sassy crests the corner. Trying to get involved, trying to get a little dangerous, but only gonna catch one, leaving second in a world of trouble. Mon yet that time. Puts his name up in lighter books, Paper X, at a tied scoreline, four apiece. And this is interesting as well, to see Paper X capitalize so quickly. Something falls, you think it's almost a disaster here to lose your duelist in this sort of scenario. Operator as well. Enemy remaining. Alex was talking about this, that Paper X's struggle has been capitalizing on these times they can find, really having the confidence to go all in on these sort of plays. Perfect example here. Just at the right time as well to tie things up for a piece. That's just shattered the economy of Sentinels now, forcing them into a timeout. Time for the coach to check back in, see what's going on. What did they adjust? What did they do after that timeout? Total tempo shift, great approach. You saw those small adjustments not quite landing with switching up, you know, where Zelsus may be, where Tens is. Paper X looking lively now. Benefit a couple of ultimates coming online here. Good turnout today as well. Absolutely. Very lively in the crowd. Always good to see the split between the two teams as well. A lot of Sen fans, a lot of PRX fans. It felt Paper X favoured. It did, it did. <laughs> it did. Maybe the cameraman's finding them for now. We'll see if it turns around. But genuinely, Paper X winning the hearts and minds of everyone, I think, over the last couple of years. Hard to not enjoy watching them, their story. I mean, that, that's it. It's the age old, right? They're, I still think they're the most entertaining team to watch, but also at the same time, they can be the most frustrating to oh, watch. Oh, I'm certain. They can be the most heartbreaking to watch. Yeah. Well, truly that any given Sunday team. Like I said though, operator back in hands for something. Bladestorm available, Seekers, the TP for Mind Freak. Plenty of tools at their disposal. Cover going out. And again, we're looking for those beginnings. Something drifting quite deep towards this, actually. And remind yourself, note. This operator could be a prized possession here. Gotta be careful to not give that over. Sheriffs, ghosts, bits and pieces, a bucky or two. Gotta be careful now. And actually, it's only him. He's drawn the entirety of Sen. Now, this round, not the one to be calling the adjustment, really. To be too worried about it is when the buy comes back in. That's where you want to look for the adjustment from Sentinels. But for now, it's looking like a very, a very likely round for Paper X here. So, I mean, Sassy would have been the only one to really contest this. Still over towards B site here. Slowly, the rotation coming Five. through. From Sen. I mean, Zekin's one off the showstopper. A chance to really swing this back in their favour, but it's going to take an awful lot in a 4v5. Yeah. A couple of overcommitments from Paper X. We haven't seen that so far. Something to want to shut down Sassy finally. Oh, his work on the operator has been divine. Oh, Zekin, though, flies through the air, but. How do you get rid of that back line? Well, you're doing a little bit of damage, but not quite enough to knock him over. Still standing, still breathing. Paper X unaffected and forsaken. Gonna find John QT. Actually, Paper X now a full house of ultimates. Been relying solely on these gunfights, and I'll be honest, getting really into the groove now of the map. Firmly in control. Even on this anti-eco here. Something in a position to create some sort of threat. And a massive gap on the other side of the map. See if Sentinels really have a response to try and shut down this operator pressure. Previously mentioned, showstopper in hand now for Zekin. Sassy and Zelsa still have their ultimates to play with. Looking for a response here. From Sentinels. And the adjustment looking towards A. Yeah, and as previously noted early on, it was John QT here really yes. layering Zelsus's utility very well. I mean, no secrets about this. The spam coming through from Paper X. Alarm bot dealt with. Already see this rotation coming through. Oh, this could be a nice ult though coming in. That should catch a fair few. Do they try and springboard off this? No, they flex a little towards that B side. Sassy's got to be careful. Monette just working in the dark. Couldn't see a thing. 
gets caught by Zekin. The site, I don't want to call it safe because they can play back to it. Already, lockdown going to come in. This puts PRX under the gun a little now. Going to have to pause. You can already see Sen looking towards where that next flex point for Paper X would be, and it is through that B site. Sarsi confirms it. He knows he's close as well. Great work from Paper X. Dismantling. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I thought he got away with that for he a second. Threw his hat at him. <laughs> Didn't quite do the damage he wanted, but Mind Freak still hot on the heels. They are playing so slippery, and they've gone back towards A. They've got that spike down. Paper X are taking fights in their spawn. Something going to slow the roll a little, ease off a touch. But Sarsi now has to re-clear if he even wants a chance at this. Something in Divai resetting now. Plenty of utility available. Oh, something and Divai actually, yeah. Trailblazer's going to come out very late oh. on. Something swings onto the angle. And Paper X find their sixth. And this is the sort of round that, I'll be honest, has been lacking. At least the consistency of these sort of rounds. With it, there's five or six different things going on. Yeah. And Paper X are just placing question marks everywhere for Sentinels. No tangibles for them to really cling on to. A beautiful shutdown from Mind Freak as well. Got to say it, Paper X looked really on the money today. Yeah. Mechanically, I, I mean, that sounds silly to almost say it, but they look deadly. And to be doing this to the likes of Zekin, who's been having an, an excellent tournament in my mind, having a really good performance. I mean, John QT as well, outstanding to the idea. Every single one of them, they are very solid. But a pace change potentially. Let's see what Monyet does with this. Has an opportunity to play this out, drawing a lot of eyes just towards him. Support is there, but the spike's not committed. Spot out here with a oh, Forsaken nearly catching. The spam through onto Zekin here have been rewarded time and time again for these sort of punishments. Finding a peak, the push and pull across the map, creating opportunities for them. Coming out, looking to posture a little outside C. I mean, it's it's drawing Sentinels perfectly. <laughs> I mean, look at the X-ray here from Forsaken. It's, it's everybody but them, tens. Uh, this is the sort of thing that happened in yeah. the previous. Sentinels just didn't know where to stack. Completely misreading the situation. Well, I guess maybe not even misreading. Laying on pretty thick with the information they are given. And Tens is noted. The only defender of the site gets found. He falls away. They, and of course, Paper X don't know the level of success they've <laughs> <Yeah>. had. <laughs> If anything, that could cost them because they're peeling away. Look at the positioning. Look at the It definitely will. Yeah, with Zelsa dr drifting up this deep, it, it definitely is to their detriment now. They had that A site on the platter and they didn't even know it, but they also don't know about Mon yet. They haven't spotted him yet. The utility didn't reveal him. That time it does, so now the position is given up. Well, should be given up. This man is stubborn in approach. And you can see why. Just punishing Sasi. And Zen looking flat on this retake so far. They need something to set them in motion. And that's it. That's what the doctor ordered. Sentinels taking back some of this site here. It My catch. didn't get affected for tens. Too quick on the trigger. And Sentinels starting to deliver. Going to get themselves up towards five here. Finding some answers. But we saw that tragedy almost in motion, Mike. That site was ready for the taking. And Paper X didn't even know it. And it's only spotting tens, which I, I guess they're identifying either Zelsis or John QT as the site anchors. But uh, time and time again, we've seen them buddied up. It, it's them really stacking utility together. So the fact that they identify tens here with Mind Freak's DP, so they're almost victims of their own success. Yes. Forcing everybody over towards C on the side of Sen, trying to catch a timing onto B. And like I said, Zelsis is really going to be the threat in the back lines there. So he can confirm they haven't rotated all the way back through spawn. And it's just, it feels like a different game every single round. You don't know quite what you're going to get here, but early intent going to be noted from something. Slipping a little further ahead, but a second to check on him. Catching him, just slipping through towards door. Good trade though, Monyet going to punish tens. Does second get to keep his life? He does this time. So still two on the site. And a one for one trade at the very start. And switching things up and really digging their heels in now outside rubble. Contesting this space now, slowing Paper X's early round. New map here though. Zekin's actually repositioned in towards three. Not been there previously. The possibility actually of comboing up here with Sassy. John QT elsewhere has found one. Zekin to find Mind Freak as well. Sentinels looking to tie things up for the half here, Lauren. Yeah, looking rather likely. Divai, Monyet, at least they're going to get a heal, right? So. It's him back to towards fighting form. 
Still got the pain shot. Still got some bits and pieces to work with. Can he get played in? Sentinels thinking better of sticking around the site. Why let him hit that play? Why give him a chance? Respecting Paperx. Gonna maybe work back in. 30 seconds. Through stairs. Left. Do they catch the timing on this? Does the spike get planted safely? Monyet is trying to keep this plant safe. No response from CT. And then the shots. That's enough. That's raised the alarm bell. They swing back in. Device gone down. It's Mon yet to try and do the impossible. 13 seconds and a dream not going to come true this time. Sen tying up the score. Six apiece. Switching sides. I mean, almost a little strange to say, but beautiful recovery there from Sentinels to get Absolutely. the last two on the board. Six in a row for Paperx. We talk about the early timeouts, but this is another example where really able to adjust perfectly. Actually, that step up in, in tempo, in, I guess, aggression, really catching Sentinels off guard and finding some beautiful reads across the map. This is the level of game I think we both wanted to see. The best from both sides Absolutely. being shown here. High quality action on just the first half. I think Sideshow has something for us. It may not have looked like it, but that was a pretty successful defense half by the numbers from Sentinels. And I want to walk you back to the bonus round to try to show you how it all got started. So as you can see, bonus, low weaponry happening here. And we take a look at what the game plan is. Nobody's heard anything around Rubble, so they tap this out. There's only two options here. When you don't hear anything Rubble, it means it's a trap play, or it means that they're playing passive. They tap the door, it's certainly not a trap, otherwise that would have been baited. And I want to pause here, just as we get to the second door opening, and highlight the Killjoy utility. This KJ utility, not in a common spot. It's not to stop them getting into tree, it's to segment off something from the rest of the squad. So as we play this out, you'll see what the game plan is. John Cutie comes over the, for the fast rotate, and they know that this jet composition likes to prime dash and get into the site to break crossfires here. Zelsis is not trying to fight it. They pop Nano Swarm. There's a snake bite. Look at the timing. I want to show you that again. Look at the timing of this double swing to punish something. And the other duelists coming in at the same time. It could not have been more perfect to shut down something Ammonia to open things up. Good anti, got them started with a 4-0 lead. And with a slight recovery towards the end of that, this is now Sentinels in a good spot at a 6-6 half on an attack-sided map. So they've managed to do the work they've put in, and despite all of the best efforts of Paper X, they've found themselves in a decent spot. So we'll see how the attack side goes. I'll send things back over to Pansy and iPod. Yeah, thank you so much for that little reminder of how good some of these rounds have been. You know, very much early in the series, it feels like this entire match so far feels you could segment it in different ways and take totally different things away from it. So many ebbs and flows to this series already, and we've only had one half and a best of five. We're in for a tree here. Let's get back into the action. Is it enough? Six to six. Can Paperx hold on to this scoreline? Or is this enough for Sentinels to close in now further on map one? I might even see a little bit of aggression here from something. Yeah, alongside Mind Freak. Sniffed out pretty quickly, though, by Sassy. And that'll be the whole of Sentinels on red alert now. As I say that, Spike already drifting back over towards Rubble. And all these three oh. members of Sentinels ahead of this. Beautiful time for Sentinels to really find contact on Mound. And allow a little bit of time here. Forsaken got to tread carefully here. Yeah, he's on a platter, and I love that little information, that fact finder just tapping the orb over there, drawing out that little trap plate. And the they instant response. Pretty quick, though. They have right. responded very quickly. There's three on CT, They're make it flood. four. They are going to go back in on this. They want a brawl. They might just get one. Sent on the other side, going to eat the paranoia, though. They're in trouble. Here's that battle. One for one trade so far. Flash going to set it in motion. They swing it around the site. Something goes down, but Mind Freak succeeds. They're down to just one now. Mind Freak! That three needs another. He's, the boots are low. low. 21 HP. Oh, it's got him! Mind Freak! Five seconds! and gets Paperx there first on the second half here, claiming the pistol, but that was just brutal between the two. No hesitation whatsoever from Paperx. Like I said, One. it was the perfect time Spike for Sentinels to catch some level oh. of contact over towards Mount. Beautiful One work from Mindfreak. But the fact that everyone's on the same page, Lauren, the call is made, and they're even here ahead of Sentinels finding the plant. How wild is that? Because I thought Sen had the perfect response, right? You had that little bit of a bait over by the old orb, and the second that that door swings, that paranoia Sen, all of that's flooded in. Brilliant. Run it, A, and they get what you thought was going to be the safety plant. It wasn't the case. Somehow, Paperx beat them there. I mean, I guess they're called W Gaming for a reason. 
quick as hell. Adjusted on the fly very nicely. But a buy back in. Yeah, setups again. I'm curious of whether or not this continues through the buy round. Forsaken up on a platter here, the solo anchor towards C. Oof. He's had a lot of stress in this game already. Gonna note that. Slips ahead of it. This is a really nice reposition potentially. Goes unsure. He's been spotted now. They found him. Prying him out of position. But he's alive so long. Look at the look at the rotation come through. They're almost here. The cavalry's on the way. But Zelsis could he do the gatekeeper to this? He can keep them back. He absolutely could for the first, but not the follow-up. Paper X. Answer back in kind. Leaving just suit two with Sen. John QT and Zekken. Bucky. Rough. No satchels left for Zekken, so he has to hope somebody walks up to him. Didn't catch on the flash, so maybe that position doesn't get fully. This considered. could be heartbreaking for something though. He's getting so close here. The smoke goes in, plays Zekin a little closer. Mind Freak's watching. Does he go for this? It's all on him. It's too much to handle. Something was ready. Mind Freak was watching. It was perfect. Another instance of Sentinels looking for a force here and a pacey hit. Stars align for him. They find the side that Forsaken's on, but he stays alive so long there. Sentinels have to do a ton of work to dig him out of that position. I mean, the benefit being as well, there's only one person on that side, so they don't even really get a, a, a big upgrade from that. I think it was a Spectre that Forsaken brings into this. Yeah. A rifle could have been a very different situation. A Bucky again here for Zekken. SMG and a Sheriff and Light Shields for Sentinels. We are seeing a different setup this time though, Forsaken over towards B and just the utility to hold down the fort, but same stack once again for Paper X. And you can see that Bucky flying on in. Zekken gonna just delete Forsaken, huge Seven impact. HP. He's still standing though, and that's all that matters. There. That's gonna allow the plant a Bucky and a couple of satchels, and they basically get to clear Forsaken. So the pressure he was under last time, as said, his survival was the impressive part. Now, do they have what it takes to withstand this retake, though? You've got a Bulldog, yes, with tens. You've got that Bucky on a barely alive Zekken, a Stinger on Sassy, and a couple of classics. On the other side, a couple rifles in play. Zekken might be played in again here. Might have another chance, something, though. No, knows better. Thinks ahead, one for one trade out. Players still favorable towards Sen, still having numbers here. Monette gonna take away tens. Something looking to springboard back in. They've got to deal with CT here. They've got to try and clear him. There's so many players there though. And Sentinel's digging their heels in. The view is taken away. Oh, John QT! Against the odds. Beautiful work from Sentinels. A Bucky and a bit of a dream. <laughs> and it's enough to get themselves back in the game. Those light shields enough to sustain here. A round three flip. I mean, it, it feels like here as well, there's a real chance the Sentinels get locked back out of this site in the post plant. With so many bodies stacked up and only Zekken with the Bucky up close. Luckily, Utility running things down and John QT finding two crucial kills to close things out here. Already early progress, going to give something to Bladestorm here. And it's something. So you know he's not going to be sitting back. He wants in. And press the corner just a ton of space cleared and crucial information here. But do they go back through? They're gonna re-clear this. And they've taken the space away again, but still they have to deal with something. The alarm bot over towards rubble. Must an indicator that Sentinel's gonna leave that space open for Paper X, but they are poised outside it. Bring them down. Paper X are here, and they are here in numbers. They've left something for the weight of the world on towards C, and they've stacked with the lesser weapons, the scraps that they can gather, and look at this trap that's been set to Vi. Could do some damage here. He's only able to get one and send just power on that forward. Perfect dead. clear. They take on the challenge, they clear him out, and the site is going to be theirs. Plants on the way, but so something. How much can one man do? Four targets. Time soon to be against him as well. Spike planted. With well, two smokes to work with. Did he get that first step? Oh, no. Absolutely not. <laughs> Sassy, gonna hold that, make sure no naughtiness comes into play. And the score line they as close courage, as ever. But no one is in 
Operator back in hand now for something. Bladestorm out of the way. Showstopper available as well for Paper X. But a couple of ultimates coming online for Sentinels there. as well. I've got a grasp now after swinging round three. Decent buffer in terms of the finances as well with that round flip. Lockdown being a key part of this as well. Look at this stack again, though. Yeah, I mean, Paper XR are just running this time and time again. Clearing the space towards Rubble. Retrieving this orb. Backing out. And this time, something going a little deeper, actually. Well, much deeper, yeah. in fact. But, but the problem still persists. Forsaken still going to have to try and do the best he can. Maybe just try and keep control towards CT. You know, you, you're not going to be able to take on five of Sen flooding your site, but you've got to try and pick somewhere to hold on to. It looks like CT is the case. An attempt on the plant, but Forsaken wants it. Oh, that's stunning. And away they there go, Forsaken! Clears site himself! That's obscenity! What? what is going on? Paper X looking lethal! And the plant not in place. The lockdown's going to come in. And now there's problems. Where the hell is that coming from, Tent? It's going to have to do some miracle work. TP here. out. Show me what you got, Tens. Something's already going. The He's already onto this. The chosen one himself, Tens, in a 1v3. Plant is there, but look at the timing. Look at the pace. Something was quick to this. Oh, the timing not good enough for Tens. He couldn't do it then. Forsaken. Magnificent in holding that, playing back through on the tap of that spike. I mean, both Mind Freak and Monyet getting two ridiculous kills yeah, here. Monyet's one Monyet was off nuts. the first ping well, of yep. the Neural Theft. And this as well, Sassy just left out in the open here. See as well, I'm not even sure. Actually, that is wild. Oh. I'm not even sure when the Viper's pick comes through there. Yeah, one of our Sentinels are thinking oh, oh, Sassy's going to be oh. in a little pocket yeah. of that. Really unfortunate timing, if so. Do we have this round operator still, of course, going to be brought back into play by something. I gotta say, though, Mind Freak's the one having an absolute belting performance here as well. On the other side, Zekken. Superstar levels of impact so far. Everyone else having a solid game, gotta say it. But again, that stack. Do they try and disrupt this? Do they put more towards this, or do they accept that this side of the map is under Paper X control? Playing much deeper this time around. They're, do, they're doing 4 1 splits, Mike. Yeah. This is crazy to me. It's working. Real faith in the Seaside retake. And I mean, the desk was highlighting this really. You don't want to be there to entertain Zekin on the entry no. for Seaside because he's lethal. Yeah, he is. I mean, this time around, there's, there's not even a trip on C. It's just the cam. There's a cam and a cage. That's it. Holy you can see, a Paper X don't want to even really entertain a brawl outside C. Oh, full retake. Whether or not Sentinels really are going to start digging a little deeper. We saw it on that round three force up. Here. Here. Certainly going to be thinking this feels almost too easy. Where the hell oh, is this coming from? Seeker's going to be coming in now. This could be the chance to start turning the screws a little. Paranoia posted, but this plays in Mind Freak. If anyone pushes too far, not the case. On still ticking and no casualties yet to be made. Mon yet the first to really step towards the site. Isolates a fight and something delivers as well. The clear back through looks concise. Zelsis nice. on the back line though. Now feeling the pressure. The plant's not good for this. Wait, can they I mean, not see this? Mon yet finally gets taken off this one, but it is just on Mon yet in a 1v2. A charge, but it slips between his fingertips. Sentinels hold on. Oh. I think John QT sends a snake. I just caught it. Before the camera switch there, a snake bite comes onto the spike. And at just the same time, Sentinels find crucial kills. That felt awkward because everybody on site just folds here. Hyperx again demonstrating confidence in this retake on C. And really the pinnacle of this being coming out of B, catching a timing on the door. Yeah, Sassy, a sigh of relief almost yeah, there. Yeah. Here's a timeout for Paper X. Enough of a statement made back from Sen that they feel like they've got to get a bit, a bit of a grip back into this game, Mike. I mean, 15 rounds between timeouts for Paper X. Well, Alex yeah. must have felt pretty good about what's yeah. going on. He's saying, obviously, usually it's only hitting the panic button when it feels or sounds like the boys are running out of ideas or, uh, I don't know, getting a little frustrated. I guess generally happy with how this has gone. And uh, rightfully so, Paper X have 
Put up a damn good performance so far in the opening rounds here in the second half. But is this the breaking point, right? Is this where Sen start taking over the game? Starting to feel it out a little bit more. Starting to read it well. And again, those unorthodox holds that Paper Ranks are depending on. I'm wondering if they go back to that or if this is one of the adjustments. That 4-1 almost. But the other the other side of that is I'm curious how much Sentinels have actually figured out on the other side of this. I mean, Forsaken's just kind of playing off the spy cam, looking for a wall bang with the Odin. Like I said, allowing Zekin to take all of this space for free. We haven't seen Sentinels other than that round three dig a little deeper, pushing into spawn, taking that space even further. I'll find you. Regardless, though, scope in hand for something. Two sheriffs, a guardian, an SMG to round things out here for Paper X. And it is that 4-1 again. Not so fast this round as we do still see that. And a forced up purchase to an extent, well, a half buy really. The B site completely absent of any resistance. So Sen going to take the space given to them, get themselves a plant. And I love this late lurk. John QT is becoming such a fun player to watch. Now, whether or not he gets away with much here is yet to be seen, but let's find out. Steps away, he does again. Always a backline threat, always that last line of defense as well. Exceptional at it. And this time, tricky. Those lighter weapons to really find much bite here for Paper X. Yeah, dealt with Deccan. Not going to let them close. Beautiful, clean, flawless round for Sentinels. And we've got to see what the adjustment is now for Paper X. Really well handled. I think maybe that is indicative of figuring out exactly what the setup is on the other side of Paper X. Because walking into B site on an anti eco feels a little uneasy, Lauren. I see. Sentinels feeling that. Maybe Paper X are leaning on these stacks. I don't know if that's full confirmation. We have seen Forsaken holding down B previously, sitting behind this trip. But we do see a bit of a switch up here. Maybe this is on the back of some utility being placed, but Forsaken and something over towards C here. Sentinels won't be there to greet it initially. And how do Paper X read that as well? Because John QT just got noted. Is that going to be, okay, it's just John QT, or oh, there's more to it? Now, I'm waiting to see this contact on the B side well, from the utility, but... Seeing this makes me feel like Sen have actually read that B is the gap. Looks like it, right? They've not particularly sprung that quickly. They've taken a moment or two, so you will have Mon yet. Very close by. The paranoia is really good. That, that couldn't have been closer. And look at the gap close from Zekin. Played into motion. I mean, Monyet was out as well here. He didn't need to go back in until he'd maybe come out of that blind. And again, Zekun just played in again. This guy is just, as said, it's not just his mechanical capability. It's the team playing him in time and time again. Full faith in what he can do, and rightly so. It looks like Paper X are hitting a brick wall here, Mike. Two rounds now where B has been their downfall. Pretty late on in the half. We need to see a switch up here. Forsaken and Divide just looking to try and hold on to these weapons. That's it. Might just yet figure out where Forsaken is. Needs to dip away now, but might even get caught by Zelsis. Oh, that Forsaken, good for it. Okay. Very good for it. All right. Well. Oh. Well. 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 He was pretty good for it. Yeah. And then everyone dies. <laughs> uh, what's the money going to be like? I I'm kind of interested if they can get a full purchase for Paper X. Obviously, I mean, three, are great. But... Yeah, three people are going to be able to get a rifle here for Paper X. But another round where Sentinels identify or seemingly have identified the gap here, the weakness. Unfortunately, this is the round where, uh, I mean, the previous round, sorry, is where we saw something in Forsaken looking to really try and absorb one of these Seasight yeah. hits and put a little bit of resistance on the way in. I'm trying to play a little touch earlier here. And Sen, this time, deciding to go towards that A site. First time we haven't seen that stack Cover in play. And it's going to start investing the smokes. One towards top side, CT. Clearing towards tree, it's pacey. Sen, uh, Paper XR here, Monyet is screwed. How is he alive? That long, but second again. His name just constantly up in light, and Tens wants in on the action, demolishing Paper X so far. 
Spike down, still an opportunity, 2v2. Make it a 2v1, 10's just going around the world, leaving it all in Forsaken and Zelsis' hands. Spike's down in tree though, so Forsaken resets it. Zelsis has to try and dig him out of this spot, Lauren. How does he play at this time? It's a good amount of time to play with here. 45 seconds. Zelsis takes a look close. Any of these corners could contain a threat. Saken getting interested now. Spike back in hand 30 in 30 seconds. Zelsis really toying with the timing here. And considering that cam check, that's maybe implying he lost track, but now springs the trap. Forsaken just plays it out so well. Zelsis may be thinking he had a window there. He absolutely didn't. Must win for Paper X, but doesn't really solve the financial issue. He's going to be struggling here in the purchase, potentially the utility behind it, but a beautiful Red Bull clutch here, Forsaken. Patient, composed, forcing the hand of Zelsis. A chance here for Paper X to tie things up. Showstopper on the other side for Zekin. One yet does have his as well, but only a Guardian in hand for him. There's two Bulldogs to round the South. Talk about being a little concerning in terms of the economy here. That is the knock-on effect. That's a lot of pressure. Potentially on Mon yet here if they do continue along this pathing. Look at the adaptations as well from Paper X on the minimap. Completely different setups here. And that early flash kind of indicated they might want to follow this sort of route. So again, Sentinel's trying to keep Sassy Paper X boxed in, boxed in here, yeah. The dog didn't see him. Oh, the po he still wins that! How does he win those? And now they respond, they know it's going to be towards A. You can see them trying to try and get towards the side. And oh, one on the other side, who comes out on top? It's second! Of course it is! But the pivot, look at where Santa going! Something is here, TP back the again! Fake. Oh, it's just breaking ankles! Tens, can he get the plant though? He's behind the wire, he's almost in enemy territory. He's banking on second to keep him safe, and he does! Does he decide to reveal where that plant is yet? Smoke gonna go up, they're so close by. This is mind games from Sen, the TP Look, coming they're, through. They're, pushing. they're pushing Tens. the smoke! There's two players! Ten stands tall, gets two! Playing out of their minds here. The kings of misdirection, Lauren. Absolutely. You can see the pressure building for Paper X. Question marks over Tenzin's whereabouts. No plant coming through. And Sentinels just freeze and cut sound. You can't even really fault Paper X. They're still oh. here for when the spike is tapped. Yes. You can see the confusion on the face of device. Almost like, what the hell's just happened? Now they got to pretty much face the music on map one with very little to bring in. One rifle on Forsaken, the alt on something, but everything else is odds and ends. It's from the scrap drawer in the kitchen. This is rough, but they're trying to get aggressive. And maybe this is what Paper X needed. Oh, just Deathmatch, just a bloodbath. And they're still doubling down. Sassy holds him away. The Defy, the triple aggress. What is this team? You can heal something as well. And he's back, sitting pretty, but the Clutch King himself, John QT, ain't got it in him! Paper X with ridiculous. the most Paper X round you've ever seen! I was talking about the other round being a must win. Look at that! Paper X just throw everything at the back line of Sen. And when you think it's over, they go again! When you think, oh, that's got to be it, they'll, they'll fall back, they'll play safe. No! They absolutely don't! <laughs> Beautifully done. The 11th hour of map one here. Timeout. Sentinels pump the brakes. <laughs> you can never count them out, can you, Paper X? No matter the odds, no matter the buy, no matter the round, no matter anything, there is always a chance. But Sen still sit at 12, Mike. They pump the brakes here, timeout. They do, and they've got the benefit now of obviously that previous comfort, I guess, across the last four or five rounds where yeah. they're actually still in a position to purchase it. A couple of key ultimates available as well. The lockdown, the hands of Zelsis, Sassy. So with the knife fall, so you could argue a slight advantage here. The paper breaks aren't necessarily <laughs> swimming in credits either. No, no. I mean, Monette's going to be struggling. 
A bulldog here in the hands of Forsaken. Give you goosebumps oh. this all around. It's map one, man. It's map, it's one, map one, one. Five. This is just ridiculous. OT or map one win. That's it. That's it. We got alts. We got a decent-ish purchase. Functional. <sighs> Two more seconds. I want OT. Where are you? I want to go the distance, but you know what? This game, I'm happy whichever way it goes. But for now, Sen take their time. There. An early test towards A, but no commitment. And a look back towards C, but there's players up here. Ten's looking to get a little weird here, potentially. The back of the smoke. There we go. Hey, Paranoid. The ult this early as well. It, I think it only caught one of them. Mind Freak falls away. No, he caught both. Tell a lie. And no way did Monyo win that fight. Sassy clearing house though. Seasight on a platter. Flank's coming in though early. Oh my God, Sassy's reading it. He's made but noise. It's something out of anyone. Why is it this man? Who could absolutely turn rounds around? Gonna take down Zelsis. Sassy wanted to avenge, wasn't given the chance. It's a 3v3, and they're here now. They're ready for this. Forsaken in CT, joined by Device. Still a flash, the dog, and all of the good stuff. Something close in the gap. Oh, and Forsaken just walks in, knocks down the door. The plant's in though. John QT and Sassy. He's seen both of them. Something. He's closing the gap. They're closing in, but the swing back. Sassy, John QT. They want the fight. Oh, it's something. Goes above and beyond for Paper X this round. He's up, he's out of his chair. And we are going OT. What a way to kick this best of five off, Lauren. <laughs> like I said, Paper X in the 11th hour. A couple of beautifully constructed rounds. Never down, never out. There is something about this side, Paper X. Because Sen looked teed up. They started to get that run building. They started to get that read. They were in this. It was looking like Sen were going to tip that scale. That start was excellent. And then the flank from something. <sighs> we're in OT. Of course we are. Map one, by the way. Just a reminder, if you're just tuning in, where have you been? But now I don't know where this goes. This is completely just, you know, OT is its own creature itself. Sure, Zekin knocking yeah. on the door of 30 now. Oh, he's had a, having a beautiful start. map, yeah. And something really, really bubbling up the last few rounds. Sentinel's back on the defense now. Hey, but Tens has been no slouch either. Keep in mind, he's been getting a little warmer throughout this game. And the early glance towards that seaside has drawn a massive response. Zelsus yeah. so back in. Here. Remember the fakes, Good Mike? Call, yeah, a trademark position here. Apex with three outside B, going to try and explore with the spy cam. So he can just leapfrog in. They get that trip down outside B. It was a late round piece. It's something here to try and destroy some of this utility and pull the rotation of Sen once again. Almost punished here. Zelsis. just a little bit of damage, but no confirmation of anybody else here. And Sentinel still with two players over this side. It's, it's only down. drawn John QT. Yeah, there's still two. Tens being one of them. Second here, the heavy hitters, the big two. The one, oh. two punch, the Sentinels, and there they go, lining up the kill feed. You just don't want to face them right now. Monstrous hold from Sen. Was that the fourth or fifth flawless we've seen so far? And they're in rounds where Paper X absolutely run it down at Sentinels. They withstand these sort of executions time and time again. Uh, this kill is just outrageous from Tens. God damn. God damn. <laughs> so good. I mean, again, I, I guess the MO there from Sentinels is just stop rotating because we saw it yeah. really, really punish them a few times right. on the regulation half. but. No 4 1 stack here this time either, so another adjustment from Paper X. We saw them struggle on this side a little more. What do they do with it now? Sen taking an air of caution. Rightly so, it's Paper X on the other side. And that three play stack is walking John QT. Are you ready for what's around that corner? Deep flash. 
No Timber doesn't know where. That's going to call back all eyes. It's a fight in spawn once again. The round that nearly kept Paper X alive. Tens going by one second on the far again. The headliners unable to stop succeeding. And now you look towards where they lean. Where do Sentinels take this? Just play mind freaking. We've got the power nowhere to work with. Still two trips. Forsaken alive and kicking on these sides. So the benefit of this utility is still here. How much of it gets removed here actually from Deccan? The TP, the TP is obscene. He let oh, he let go! Do not let Deccan pass! You gotta know better! The man's a mechanical monster! And now it's just to buy to face the music. Map one. On the line here. Sentinels. Looking large and in charge in OT. The time singing their song. How much can he do here? Sassy, Zekun, John QT, Zelsis waiting for that pixel to show that player to swing. And it looks like Zelsis will be the first to spot it. The follow up not going to happen. Zekun wraps this map up in a bow. Beautiful performance. Every single day, he's looking more and more like the MVP and with performances like that to kick off a best of five. <laughs> You've got to be so happy to have him on your team. Eight opening kills for him. Absolutely ridiculous. Heroics from that man, and it was still OT. That says something. If you're having Zekun putting up 32 kills, 10s on 25, you had those eight first bloods, all of the good stuff. What a map to start with. Don't go anywhere. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this.